This is Adam L. Humphreys, and as some of you may have already already known, have already known, I was working on a certain clock project. This here is the result, and as you can see, it is now 137. 137 there, the the brighter light representing the hour. Uh, of course, the light in the middle representing the seconds. It just kind of fades in one second and fades out and then fades in in one second. <clears throat> and uh, the dimmer lights represent the minutes. Oh, it just changed to 138. So, or or 1238, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm not used to reading an analog clock. But that's what I wanted to do differently. Everyone else seems to be doing the Nixie Tube stuff, but that seems a little overrated, seem almost overdone. I, I tried looking up to see if someone had done this uh, on the internet online. I didn't find anything, so I, I just had to make it. Um, <coughs> uh, it keeps pretty accurate time, even though I did not use that crystal. I am actually using the um, 60 hertz from the transformer that powers it as a clock that my microcontroller is actually reading. I'm, I'm using an Atmega 328 but I think with a, a, a little bit um, more work I can probably use an AtTiny 84, the, the small 17 pin chip to do the same thing I'm doing now. <coughs> Alright now it's 1239 because that one light is still barely lit there if you can see it. Soon to be 1240 uh, and it has another mode, it just has a mode where it cycles through the lights to test them, make sure they work. And it's also kind of a decorative mode also. And of course an hour and minute button, you don't have to press any other buttons to set that, you can just continue. So if I want to change the hour, it just uh, can proceeds forward. So I need to stick that back to where it belongs. And if I want to turn the lights off, I had another button. The only reason I would want to do that is so I can probably go to sleep without having bright lights in my room. Uh, as far as power though, <coughs> altogether it only uses on average, or actually at peak, about 10 watts. And that's including the transformer, which isn't that efficient. Otherwise, it would use only about 6 watts peak. So, this really isn't bad at all, considering you lose a lot of watts just from random power supplies laying around. <coughs> laying around. Uh, uh, if the power goes off, though, I do not have a backup battery on it, but it does remember where it left off. It will notice that cycles are not coming in, and therefore it doesn't have you know, a clock for the processor to go by. It doesn't know when to advance to the next stage. So after <coughs> two cycles of not, or after so long, it'll notice the cycles are no longer there. And therefore, it won't be updating the time. And it'll write it to, to the EE prom. So when it comes back on, it'll read it, and it'll remember where it left off. <coughs> so, I guess that's uh, pretty much it there. It's now 12.41, there as you can see. So, and also, I guess the last thing is, with all the lights off, and actually, you can see that, I'm not sure if you can even see that, it actually produces some nice shadows on the wall. Let's see if I can get this. Yeah, you can kind of see that a little better, I think. And it's kind of interesting to see the various different effects that it makes on the wall with the shadows. And that is not a light there, that is just a reflection off of, <coughs> a reflection off of the base there. So uh, that's my project. Uh, it was a lot of fun and I uh, hope everyone enjoyed watching. Um, thank you very much.